wanted to be uh, the one to do this. Lord Graham, you're under arrest for murder. You have the right to remain silent. So now we've arrived here. Hannibal's first season wrapped up in an immensely satisfying way as it wasn't the good doctor that ended up behind bars, no. In a glorious twist of events, it was none other than Will himself. Hannibal's master plan played out exactly like he knew it would, as Will took the fall for not just Abigail's murder, but for also all of the copycat killer's victims. It's a huge turn of events for a show that's first season essentially acts as a prequel to the previous material. So to have the man that eventually ends up catching Hannibal be the one to take the fall instead of him surprised us all and gave us a finale that is not easy to forget. And that final shot was and still remains one of my favourite shots of the entire show. The score, the atmosphere, the reverse of roles, everything about it gave us a perfect way for the show to end its first season. Hannibal won. Last week we got a little teasing that Hannibal might actually get caught. But even when Will finally opened his eyes to Hannibal, by then it was too late. Everything had been planned without a single misstep to make Will and everyone else believe that he was the one who killed Abigail. Her fate seems almost certain now, with Will throwing up an ear, the blood-soaked floor back at the Hobbs home, and that tasty conversation between Hannibal and Bedelia. It was obviously hinting that said veal was meant to be Abigail, and if that is to be her fate, she can go out knowing that she has played a key role in the show's first run. And it hurts so much to see Will be beaten down like this, to a state where even he believes it possible that he got too close and ended up killing Abigail. And you know, if it wasn't for all of the other copycats murders being thrown at him as well, that could have been the end of it. Will may have accepted that, but with the likes of Marissa Shaw and Cassie Boyle's deaths being pointed at him too, Will knew something definitely wasn't right. He wasn't sick when those murders were committed, and when he heard that his fishing lures had also been tampered with, he knew someone and someone that had to be close was orchestrating the entire thing. Not a huge list when you begin to narrow it down, but it didn't serve in Will's favour after he was brought in by the FBI to directly say to Jack that he was one of those candidates. It just made him seem more guilty, and you could tell Jack hated every second that he was in there with Will, after he was forced to arrest him and take him away. On the bright side, Alana's brilliant mind and persistence of Will's condition had them find out what he was suffering from. She theorised about the advanced encephalitis as he received treatment towards the end of the episode, and is expected to make a substantial recovery. But it won't do him any good if that recovery still keeps him behind the bars of the Baltimore State Hospital for the criminally insane. I'm sure she will continue her fight for Will's sanity, but if we've learnt anything by now, Hannibal likely is prepared for that as well. And back at the Hobbs home, oh what a segment. Will standing there in Garrett Jacob Hobbs's kitchen, replaying the past events in his mind, remembering the phone call and those role-playing moments had him finally realise that the man he was looking for had been right in front of him this entire time. He opened his eyes to Hannibal, seeing him for what he truly was, that of a monster. Jack stormed the party before the fireworks went off, and after Will was shot, he laid exactly where Garrett Jacob Hobbs did. A remarkable turn of events when looking back at the first episode. I'm not so sure I know who you are anymore. My overall verdict for Hannibal's season one finale is a strong 9 out of 10. The home stretch of Hannibal's first season was consistently strong and extremely satisfying. The culmination of Will's deteriorating mind played perfectly into Hannibal's master plan. The villain won, at least for now, and with Will being treated for his condition, he can return to his original mindset, as I imagine he will be determined to prove 
his rightful innocence. There's some stumbling blocks, of course. He's currently locked up in that cell without any means of investigation, which means he's going to have to reach out to someone and appeal to their hope in that they will believe his story. Someone has to. He can't stay in there forever, given where we know the story must lead, but knowing that does not at all take away from what we have just seen. I've mentioned it countless times before, but again, the show's visuals just blow you away with each of its scenes, and something which isn't mentioned as often as it should be, and owes just as much to the end product, is the sound element of the show. With that final scene and the classical music that plays, something we all know Hannibal is a fan of, underlines that the writers and showrunners fully understand these characters. And whilst we're speaking of that scene, who would have ever thought that come the season's end that it would be Will, not Hannibal, who was behind bars? The shot of Will staring back at Hannibal is unquestionably my favourite scene of the episode, and a moment that has lived long in my memory and one that ranks up at the very very top with some of the best that this season has had to offer. The reverse of roles just made the scene even more memorable. No one when this show started would have ever expected it. And just how on earth did Abigail's ear end up there? Will lately hasn't looked in good health on the best of his days, but throwing up Abigail's ear just adds another level to how screwed he is in terms of the evidence piled up against him. Abigail lost him back at the cabin, and she had both ears when running into Hannibal. So somehow Hannibal was able to find Will, get that ear into his stomach, and get out without Will remembering. Perhaps with his mind healing, eventually he he will remember something, but the time for worrying is now, not later. If he is found guilty of all these murders, I do not want to think what could be in store for him, as that cell could be the least of his problems. However, he does know the truth. Question is, can he find a way out of being the scapegoat to focus on catching the man who did this to him, or will Hannibal continue to foil his plans which could lead into a potential disaster? To find that out, I suggest you get caught up on season two. And that'll do it from me. What did you guys think of Hannibal's first season finale? And what was your favourite episode from the first season? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you on the next one. Hello, Dr. Lecter.